I think fashion has forgotten the woman over 40. We're not actually taught the fundamentals of like, how do we put ourselves together so that we're empowered with every stage of our life? A lot of times our closet represents these old versions of ourselves and it's like looking into a graveyard. Welcome to our next portion in this series where we're taking one of the Healthy Beauty Oasis members, Beth, and up-leveling everything she's doing. And I'm bringing in one of the most incredible image style presence consultants I've ever met, Katherine Johnson. And she's going to bring a whole new perspective into a methodology that I use and talk about a lot within the Healthy Beauty Oasis with this process I call the Beauty Muse. And you can amalgamate it from different celebrities or people you know, or a time in your life when you just felt like, here I am, I am showing up in this room, all of me. And they could be different for different periods of your life. A beauty muse is not something that is static. It's not just one thing. So Beth has already done some of this pre-work and we're gonna dive into what Catherine has to say with regards to putting it all together in a beautiful package, particularly for women over 40. All right, Beth, are you ready to share with us some of the beauty muse adjectives and descriptors you've come up with for yourself? Absolutely. Kindness, honesty, integrity, loving, and joyful. Are there any celebrities you identify with or were there any people in your life like your second grade school teacher perhaps? Okay, so for the celebrities, I really had a lot of fun thinking about this. Sophia Loren. I love how she has aged beautifully and sophisticated. Julia Roberts. She has a very natural look. She seems so authentic. Princess Diana. I love her heart of servants. She's so incredibly beautiful. And then Whitney Houston. I loved her music. It was just so empowering. I love the wildness of Janis Joplin. <laughs> I was kind of wondering and waiting for when I was going to hear something like a Janis Joplin thrown in there because you have purple hair. <laughs> oh, yeah. Got a wild child streak in you that has flourished, right? When we talk about these more classic, sophisticated, reserved sort of people. When we talk about them this way and we talk about Janis Joplin, you know, long hair, just belting into a microphone. How do we even bring these together into a beauty muse? And you already told us your adjectives have so much to do around heart and love and authenticity and integrity. What's the energy? Who are sort of the icons? And we're going to put it together in a, a more crystal clear package for you with Catherine's help. I see her making notes. I have been taking notes, <laughs> you know, talking about the beauty news, just hearing it. It's not a literal one-to-one -one translation. We're capturing the essence of something or we're saying, okay, what, what are those qualities that you experience? I could look at Sophia Loren and come up with very different qualities that I experienced through her. What's most important is that you can articulate it for you because you know, of course, it's not going to be a 1960s, you know, film festival attire that we see, you know, in a beautiful image, but there's qualities that are exuded. And, and then it's like, well, how do we translate that for you in, you know, your life? And how do we spend 80% of our time? You know, same when we look in our closet, what, what's the 80% versus the 20% of all those special occasions? Because we want you to feel that good in your day to day. We're going to do a couple exercises that are at the foundation of what I do with my clients. And I've been working with women for over eight years in this space of leadership presence, image consulting, and ultimately it's the intersection of our personal power, our style, how we show up in the world and how we can feel seen, heard and valued from a much more authentic place. I always want people to have a compass for themselves and it isn't a prescription. So these exercises that I've come up with are part of my unique method that I call the true reveal method. I've worked with women all over the world and in all different ranges of their careers and their lives. But I would say the thing that really ties everyone together is that they will come to me saying they're going through change, right? They feel like they are becoming a version of themselves and yet they don't know how to 
how to show that on the outside, right? So they either feel kind of stuck or they're invisible or they're not connecting with people at the level they'd like and they're not really sure what to do. And so they're at the point where the, it matters to them. This level of alignment is so important that they say, well, maybe this is a piece of it. Maybe, you know, my external presence all the way to like what I'm wearing is having an impact, but they really don't have the tools or the know-how to make any, you know, changes that they feel confident in. Getting a compass for yourself, and that's what we're about to do, is step one, because how can we evaluate what's working for us if we don't have a guidepost, right? We're, we need to get beyond, am I building a good or bad outfit? You know, how does this look on the hanger? We need to actually have a compass that says, this is the intention for how I want to show up in the world. This is the way I want to feel in my body and in my clothes. And then you can say yes or no, you know, are these clothes doing this for me? Does that make sense? I feel that a hundred percent. Okay. Totally. <laughs> good, good. We're not taught any of this. I know I wasn't, Chris and I have talked about this, like, you know, we get our influence and our ideas about style at a very young age from lots of different places. It can be from, you know, a parent, a family figure, a teacher, a celebrity, what, what's in style at that time. But we're not actually taught the fundamentals of like, how do we put ourselves together? How do we use color and the energetics of color and, you know, our own natural silhouette in a way that works for us so that we're empowered with every stage of our life to feel like, okay, I know how to work, you know, in concert with myself. Instead, we're kind of at the receiving end of all sorts of information and misinformation, and it's really confusing. Most of my clients come to me, they don't like shopping, they feel overwhelmed, the act of getting dressed is like a huge energy drain. They wonder what's wrong with them, and I'm like, nothing's wrong with you. <laughs> and then add on top of that, a new chapter of life you know, leaving behind who you were, growing into a new version of yourself. Well, a lot of times our closet represents these old versions of ourselves. And it's like looking into a graveyard of our past selves. And so as you evolve, it can feel really incongruent to keep putting on clothes that represent that old chapter of your life. You really and I want to jump in here yeah. because the part that I like to highlight with the beauty piece is that so many of the things that we do to inform our style, our makeup, our beauty, our skincare, our hair is to go at it from what we don't like. Hmm. And this is flipping that script because with the beauty muse adjectives, I'm asking you to find what works for you, what you do like, what what inspires you rather than, well, I don't really like my nose and I just, nah, nah, nah. what happens when you approach it from the inspiration you're moving towards rather than the thing you're running away from that you want to hide or fix? I see that all the time. There have been trends, like let's say in the past 20 years and they come directly from, I want to hide my, my butt. And so you'd see the like longer, tank top underneath a shirt and then let it create this band. And what that does visually is it says, look right here because it's drawing the eye to that place. I'm thinking of Sophia Loren. What if she didn't like her voluptuous, you know, curves and she wanted to hide her butt. And so can you imagine instead of those beautiful dresses that she wore, she just wore really long shirts that were too big and they hung, hung out down over her butt. You know, the tent dress, the tent dress, like all these things. And I even see it now where I'm like, I see a woman. I'm like, oh, I can tell she's getting dressed based on I don't like the way my butt is right now. And so I'm just going to cover it. And so that's the starting place of the outfit is how do I hide? I am 100 percent guilty. I now have this belly that I've never had before. And, and it bothers me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The rest and of me, whatever. So unfortunately, all of my blouses hang out. I never tuck them in. And I was that person that would just wear leggings and the oversized blouse. You're not alone. Our eye goes there. And like Kristen was saying too, with our makeup, I've done that too. I've had lots of clothes in my you know, past, past chapters of my life where it started with, what do I want to hide? And that's such a different starting place. And so it's like, well, how can we say we want to show up in the world if our main intention is how can I hide myself or parts of myself, right? So Isn't it's like, that interesting because in makeup, the black eyeliner that I see ubiquitously 
upper and lower lids because people are trying to bring out their eyes. And actually the black is receding the eye. So the very thing they're trying to fix is causing a reverse and diminishing effect. It's not about, yeah, feeling guilty or shaming ourselves. It's just being like, oh, I, I can see where I do that. Or I can see those moments where I make those decisions. And so what can I do instead? And until you have some alternatives, that's where it can just feel overwhelming and like, oh, well, I'm, I'm just gonna have to keep doing what I've been doing. You know, getting dressed and design is about optical illusions. It is about working with your proportions and being able to, you know, minimize things and enhance things. It's, there is a little bit, uh, an element of, of magic. I mean, Kristen's a magician in what she's able to do, but her intention is how do we enhance you? The Italian word for makeup artist is magician. That's the literal translation. And so we are working with illusion because you can either choose to work with something and bring the other person's eye to exactly what you want them to see first. It's not just about uh, that you're some static building. You are energy, you are life, you are moving and you're dynamic. And we have to honor that because you're not a mugshot. Like it really makes sense to think of yourself in this much more dimensional way. So let's build off of that. So when you think of your style and specifically, we're going to be thinking you're getting dressed, your wardrobe, how you put yourself together. Just give me a couple words that come to mind of what to you are things that you're ready to release that you don't want to experience anymore when you show up. And it can be very specific to like clothing on your body, or it can be more macro concepts and the feelings around getting dressed and showing up that you're ready to move away from. So Catherine, I walked away from everything I had in life a little over a year ago. I started over brand new. I had been following Kristen and I knew that with her healthy beauty oasis, it resonated with me. And I wanted to be a part of this amazing journey because I had so much trauma that I was literally digging out of. Mm -hmm. And it was a daily practice. Fast forward a year now, and I am able to be more present and more joyful in life, going from somebody who was barely able to sit upright to now somebody who is shining outward and participating more and not just leaning in and listening, but trying new things. She saw these things in me and she said, hey, Beth, how would you like to try a little something extra to just put the polish on and get you right past that. I've been working really hard at my own personal growth so that I can be the human being that I've been meant to be. And if my journey is helpful, then that's a blessing. Well, thank you for sharing that. And I feel really, really honored that I'm getting to interact with you and support you in some small way. It takes a lot of courage what you've been going through and you're really interrupting a pattern to set yourself up for kind of a clean start at living as yourself. I won't say that every day is easy. That's one of the things that I've gained out of this healthy beauty oasis is even if I'm having a down day, just the good vibes. And it mm -hmm. reminds me that um, I am worth it. And I'm gaining a lot of my confidence and self-worth back. As you generate more of that goodness for yourself, you are naturally rating it out. It is not something you have to try to do mm -hmm. out there. It's all coming from within here. Showing up as your true self in your natural, you know, beauty and radiance, that's a gift to others. And, and that can really inspire others to look at where are they hiding or where are they not being right. true to themselves. Sometimes I feel grumpy. I have one pair of slacks that look good on me that have a button and a zipper. These days, the only thing you can find now are these polyester pull-on elastic only pants. Mm -hmm. And I don't wear leggings to work. And then the pull-on pants just remind me of the 1970s polyester thing. Right. Do this. Tell me on a scale of one to 10, one being horrible, kind of like you feel like you're just dressed in a paper bag hiding and 10 being like you're radiant and it's the best you've ever felt. When you're describing that, you know, putting that all together, put a number to it. 
so we can quantify it. I just think it's like just a very like a five mm -hmm. because it, it's it's nicer than what others might wear, but I know I'm not my optimal. Yeah. I'm not showing up feeling like I am rocking the day. Yeah. I Here's why that's important. I want you to know that feeling and everybody can think to themselves, they know an outfit that's like that. It's a five. It's kind of like it'll do. It makes sense. It looks, you know, together, but you know how it feels. And when it feels like a five, that's settling and you yeah. don't love it. And you, and so you take that energy out in the world. And that's something really powerful about how we start our day is the way you make yourself feel and the way you adorn yourself with your clothes, the way you put yourself together, it isn't just about it looking good or bad because I'm sure that outfit looks good. It looks fine. But when you know it's a five, you carry yourself out into the world that way. It impacts how the confidence you feel. It impacts the way you connect with others. It impacts the way others connect with you. And so the goal is how can we move the needle for you so that you're living, I call it your hell yes zone, but that you're living in an eight, nine, and 10. Like everything in your closet, when you put it together, just imagine that energy every day. We all have those moments. And instead of those being 20% of the time, let's get them to be much more often, kind of being stuck. That's, I call that the style swamp. It's like those five, six, and sevens because they're not egregious, right? But they're okay. like, it just doesn't do anything for you. Right. As soon as you said the style swamp, I immediately was like, I need an alliteration. And it popped in my brain. I was like, the makeup marsh. Okay. <laughs> where, where mauve exists. <laughs> this is the color I'm always like, please stop buying more mauve everything. Well, something that, um, that you said, Beth, that reminded me of is I'm frustrated by fashion a lot. I love vintage fashion. Um, I love style that's elegant and classic. And I'm so upset most of the time at like the current state of women's clothing. And especially I think fashion has forgotten the woman over 40. Yes. Like, like when you're describing what are all the pants now, a 40 year old or 50 year old or 60 year old, like mature stylish woman, it, we're not going to be wearing the little the leggings and the things that 20 year olds are wearing like and so it's like so what are we supposed to do and they've just like we're just it's forgotten and so, there's no dresses there's no suits yeah. there's no business pants or decent slacks our choices are abysmal yeah, <laughs> so no wonder you're good. like overwhelmed and we're frustrated and we're trying to make things work and then add on that they're like here are the colors of the season it's hot pink and black and one other thing so we don't have a lot to work with. I don't want you to feel or for women to feel like you're alone in this. The woman over 40 is like doing her best with very, very minimal options. Yeah. And this is why it's been so important to create a beauty space for people over 40, because the first time I did a video for over 50 makeup, it went mega viral. And I just thought nobody would care, but they really cared. Yes, we are at our most powerful, our most wise, our most incredible as we get all this life experience. And yet, unfortunately, we keep getting this push down and just imagine the amount of incredible things that could happen in this world if we discarded all of that junk that has been placed upon us and we lived our lives as the beautiful, experienced, wise, fantastic human beings over 40 that we are. I mean, let women run the world, okay? <laughs> I wanna share something in line with that. In the first half of the 20th century, the most beautiful fabrics, the most elegant styles, the most sophisticated things you could wear were reserved for women over 40. Wow. It was considered only women with enough life experience and maturity could handle that kind of sophistication. And so from the necklines to the fabrics to the cut, it was reserved for women over 40. And it was younger women had these more playful and whimsical, just more youthful, but immature things. And so there was a like a natural maturation in which you looked forward to the styles that you could wear as a woman. I'm pulling out socio-historical junk of the early half of the 20th century because there's things about that that were not good for women. But from simply a style perspective, it really flipped 
in the 60s in the counterculture, there became this real obsession in the United States with youth and everything got thrown out. Like we threw out the baby with the bathwater. And so that's where now our youth obsession and this anti-aging has taken out a reverence for women to have style and that style came with your life experience that you could carry that, carry it off. And so if you look at vintage films and movies and just photographs, the way women would dress, you could really feel it. But it's something to know is like, this hasn't, it hasn't been this way forever. And what would it be like to reclaim that sense of wearing the fabrics and for a silhouette of a mature body? Okay, so Beth, I've heard you say you want to move from feeling frumpy, you the idea of feeling like on a scale of one to 10, you're showing up, you know, your outfit feels like a five. What do you want to move towards in a direction of this radiance and style that is possible? You just haven't figured out how to do it yet. Like a polished, sophisticated look, just really put together. Okay. So, so when people see me, they're like, she looks great today. Yeah, love that. I want for every woman I work with is that people just say, wow, you look great versus, oh, I like that, you know, specific thing that you're wearing. I want them just to see all of you. That's it. And yeah. not be able to put their finger on it and just feel like, wow, you look great. What we're doing is we're, we're starting to calibrate, right? We're creating this compass, which I call your style recipe, and it's going to be authentic for you. And what's really important is that you understand it's authentic for who you are now in life. Because that's when our style starts to feel stuck in a rut is when it's some old version of us from some past way we live. Okay, so one of the things that maybe I should articulate is that I'm through menopause, mm -hmm. still having those terrible hot flashes, but that's another mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. But I wanna step into my power and um, how can I look vibrant? Mm-hmm. I'm so glad you brought that up. Something okay. that saying you want to step into your power and I'm thinking of all those women who are your beauty muses you mentioned, they were women. They felt like grown ass women. You know what I mean? And yeah. so that thread I think is consistent and you just articulated it well of what you want for yourself. It's all new for me finding my voice and trying to put myself out there in that way. So it's a learning opportunity for me to walk through this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, whenever we talk about something external, um, I don't believe it's ever only about the external. Our external presence is very much connected to our willingness to step into our personal power and be seen because unconsciously we're sending little signals through our external presence all the time yes absolutely it's like you're right where you're supposed to be and you're asking all the right questions of yourself and you're turning you know for guidance as well because you've never gone through this stage before and and i'm in my mid-40s and i'm going through it too and it's like oh why don't i feel like the woman i was 15 years ago or 20 years ago and it's because you've changed and so stepping into that power means getting to know the new you. What I've asked you to do as part of this style recipe exercise is to find some sort of object that you love design wise. Uh, this is an exercise I walk all my clients through. It's, it's kind of magical and it has two stages to it. So the first is just identify that thing that lights you up design wise. It can be something in nature. It could be a photograph. It could be a room in a house. So have you found something that right now you just love and lights you up design wise? You have to look at it. I do. I love jewelry. Okay. I have this beautiful amethyst. Then I have um, little matching earrings that go with it. Okay, gorgeous. You're a you're a vision in purple right now, by the way. <laughs> I guess you, you must hate that, that color. <laughs> it's uh, the color of royalty. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, good. So what I want you to do is have that where you can see it. Okay. And I'm just going to guide you through a few questions. And this is something that everybody can do. I do this in my course. I walk people through a guided exercise. What I'm going to ask you to do <laughs> 
is not to overthink it. So when I'm asking you things, just go with your gut. If you're hemming and hawing and you're stuck in your brain, you're, you're making it too hard and it has nothing to do with what you're wearing yet. I'm just asking you questions about that object. Okay. So I want you to really look at it. Okay. Uh, if you're following along, you know, you pull it up in your mind's eye. What do you love about it? The color. Or how does it make you feel? Oh boy. You told me not to think too much. Um, um, sophisticated. And I like gemstones. I just think that it's just this beautiful part of nature that has this amazing energy that you can mm. connect with. They're just vibrant. Mm. So I'm attracted to the unique beauty that they bring. Is there anything else around just the qualities that you experience with it? The way it makes you feel? It just feels good. It makes me feel beautiful. Mm -hmm. I just want to read to you all the words that I heard. Okay. Sophisticated, different, unique, beautiful, natural, energy, connected, attractive, vibrant, unique, beauty, and beautiful. You said beautiful three different times in three different ways. <laughs> From these words, I want you to narrow down which ones to you speak to you most powerfully, really resonate, and you're like, yes, I want that. I want to experience more of that in my life. I want to carry that, you know, those qualities and that energy. It's not going to be a, a thinking. It's going to come from deeper within you, like a hell yes. Okay. 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 So which ones feel like a hell yes for you? Unique, sophisticated, beautiful, energy, and vibrant. Great. All right. How does that feel to you when you look at that and you're like, this is the compass I want to have for myself. How does that feel to you? Like, I love that. Like, it's yeah. just really there's an it's just really resonating great and the, you know the, the other ones were nice but the other ones were like mm -hmm, yeah uh-huh uh-huh yeah. yeah good okay good i'm glad you could notice that distinction yeah Th this is now your style recipe for right now and it's a living list as you change and evolve these words are going to change and evolve. So you don't need to cling to this too tightly because you're just fine tuning and tuning in. Okay? okay. You want to have this list somewhere where you can see it every day. It isn't like one and done and never think about it. You want to remind yourself. So I recommend, you know, put it on a sticky note, put it on your bathroom mirror, put it in your closet where you get dressed every day, start using it to evaluate what you put on your body. The step here that's critical is to translate this into your style is to understand that some of these qualities are going to come from you and your clothing is just acting as a frame so let me take one of these words for example let's say vibrant i get the feeling you are coming into yourself and you have a really vibrant energy about you right that a lot of that can be through your personality and just you shining and feeling comfortable and safe in the world that it's okay to shine if we were to look at the color you know a, a color wheel we might say oh there's certain colors that are more vibrant you don't necessarily have to be in vibrant colors for vibrant energy to come across does that make sense wow i had not really seen that distinctly mm -hmm. but i understand what you're saying yeah. i don't have to wear bright red and bright purples and bright blues you know i can be okay in subdued colors because it's my energy that's going to be yeah. emanating out so i, I love that yeah even i mean even you have red. you have vibrant eyes beth i mean i'm like mesmerized just here we're on camera together and and from your eyes that's how we connect the energetics of our essence can come through our eyes my philosophy is if your clothing is the frame it means it's bringing all attention up to your face and to your energy and to your authenticity your vibrancy just coming from your eyes and your personality and like the love that you carry we want people to see that i'll give you an example i had a client who like joy was really important on her style recipe she realized she'd been dressing in colors that to her said joy so she gave the job to the clothes to say joy to the world but they overpowered her. And so she was in all these bright, cheerful colors all the time. And it, it felt like a costume. And she was the most bright, animated, joyful person. And that's what needed to come through. So this shifting in her wardrobe actually allowed that to come from her and people experience it. And that creates a very different way to connect with people in the world. I love that. 
that's why it's not just like a here's you know the prescriptive way you're going to do it we want people to see you and compliment on oh you look great not your clothes walked in 10 minutes before you did right <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes they can do that it can be a real shift to say oh no i want to be seen especially if we've lived our lives like i identify with having lived a whole chapter of my life where i really felt like i was hiding in plain sight you know my clothing was an invisibility cloak Yep. And so when I craved a level of connection and being seen in my life, I also had to relearn how to use my style to allow myself to be seen. Most open hearted way to, to step into like a style revamp is to say, OK, I'm willing to try. If you can think of it that way, then every time you're working with your style recipe, you're just collecting data from your style recipe. Just say, how aligned am I? And do that one to 10. And that's like a go with your gut. You don't have to overthink that because your body will know if it's a five, you shouldn't have to try too hard to love something. But when it's a hell yes, you know, right? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So you're like, hmm, I look good. <laughs> totally. So you want to communicate to yourself that you're sophisticated, unique, beautiful. You have that energy and you're vibrant. And then you can turn and bring it out into the world. This part is very much about you building that muscle of, of, of developing when is it a hell yes. And at first you're going to find the hell yeses are fewer and far between. If I were with you and we could fill a dressing room with clothes that had potential, even with me, you know, and this is my profession, only 20% of them are going to be a hell yes. Set your expectations that way. And that way it's really liberating when you say, nope, 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 not good enough, not good enough, not good enough. Because wouldn't you rather have a few things that are hell yeses? I was that person that would put 20 items in my cart and I literally would buy almost all of them. Just recently, I probably walked in with 30 items and walked out with none. The saying yes can give us like a quick dopamine hit, but ultimately it's how we end up having a closet full of clothes and nothing to wear. It's, it's a sad but true thing. We feel great when we get to the register and somewhere between the car and the house, that feeling has just gone. Yeah. <laughs> This was a big thing for me to, to overcome. Mm. So um, I, I'm glad we're having this conversation because it kind of validates that, yeah, we're human beings and it happens to us and I'm not alone. Uh, you got the cheat code now. That's what I'm saying. You get yeah. your sticky and you go in the dressing room and you put that sticky up on that mirror and you read down them and you put those clothes on and you go, do I got it? Do I got it? Am I hitting the check boxes? And I meant to know. See you later. <laughs> Totally. And like I said, if you keep it like a laboratory your whole life, it's going to feel fresh to you, right? You're not going to stay the same person for the rest of your life. You're going to have more chapters. It's a chance for you to share yourself with the world and for you to, to feel in alignment. I love it. Okay, so Beth, I'm going to give you some homework before your next session, and I want it to feel very simple and doable. You're going to be showing up again, and I want you to use your own closet. You can just shop your closet to work on what is aligned for you in this style recipe to find a hell yes. Let's just focus on tops since we're here working, you know, in a in a Zoom environment. Pull out, let's say 10 different tops that you have or it could be dresses too. As many different colors as you have, and also different necklines. You're gonna put them on and you're gonna do the couple questions I was just explaining. So, so one, do I see myself or do I see the clothing first? Or if it creates the frame, the effect that's going to have is when you look in the mirror, you're actually going to come forward. You know, the right colors will bring uh, like a natural glow to your face. The wrong colors might make you look more tired or they'll wash you out. So you're acting again as an observer. You're not evaluating, oh, this is good or bad. You're just saying, oh, look what happens. Pay attention. If a neckline is too high up, it might feel like it has a choking effect. Notice a V-neck that might be more flattering and create more of an openness. And then you're gonna give it a number. What are those items that when you put them on and you look in the mirror and use your style recipe, they come up to an eight, nine, or 10. Beware of the swamp. Those are the five, six, and sevens. Okay. okay. And does that include jewelry? Yes. Jewelry follows the same guidelines of, it's playing a supporting role, right? You are the main character. So everything there is, it feels like it's in proportion, right? The way it lays, the way it works with your clothing. That's a level of harmony where you want everything in your outfit to feel like it's related versus disparate things that are each demanding attention. 
play with colors that are in a range of some are more muted. I would like you to have a couple pieces of clothing that are on the more neutral and muted side. Try it on to see like, oh, what happens? Because maybe then you come forward more. You could try some mid-tone colors. Those tend to be very good foundational colors, which mean they act like a good frame. And that can be everything from browns, teal, creams, navy blue. Your eye color is a really good indication of a, a color that will work on you. It can be considered like your soul color. Here's the thing, when we wear our eye color, it brings the attention up. And this is where, you know, when you're talking with Kristen with makeup, we have to consider also you have a very vibrant color going on as part of your frame that she's going to be working with in terms of makeup. And we need to uh, keep that in mind for your clothing as well. Okay. okay. So do mid-tones, do neutrals. You could look at some of your, I call them dynamic colors. Those are going to be the more vibrant. Each one has a different energetic signature. A typical closet will have some of all of it. You're just trying to figure out which ones are most aligned for you because there's some that will work and there's some that will wash you out. So narrow it down and try to find like one of each. One neutral, one mid-tone foundational color, and one vibrant. And bring that to your next session, okay? And we'll see how that is on, on camera and with your makeup. And then what about the standard black or white? Just do we leave them out? I would leave them out for now. Here's the reason why. Over 40, black is such a dense color that it tends to create a hardness in the same way that Kristen talks with makeup with, you know, using anything like black that's too harsh. It ends up washing, washing people out or making them look more tired. And there's better colors that you can use than black that have kind of that sophisticated and grounding look. So that's where I want you to look at like the browns, the charcoal grays, navy blues, olive. I would rather have people have very limited amounts of black in their wardrobe and have a greater range of colors that actually work on them. And black is not one of those universal. It can make a good outfit, but it's not actually bringing out the natural radiance of women. So interesting. Mm -hmm. That is very interesting because I do have a lot of black and I've got black, white, and grays mixed. Yeah. That's, that's so interesting. And I don't want to keep making the same mistake because it would be just like me to be like, I think I'm just going to go get a new black dress today. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I had a closet 10, 15 years ago. It was all black and gray. Yeah. And I always looked great. You know, I had style. But what I learned was for me, and, and this is very common, is it actually is ending up, it's either like an invisibility cloak or it's like armor because it has, it's energetically the densest color. So it creates this hardness around us. And so when we use language, that says we want to open up, we want to connect, we want to be approachable, then we're creating this cognitive dissonance. And so what can we do differently? And it goes against what stores are force feeding us. But that's why I love shopping consignment where you can get greater access to the colors. Um, we're such visual creatures. We have so much that we could be using from a color perspective. Um, why not try? Why not try something yeah. different? <laughs> no, I love it. I, I, I love it. I, and notice how your body responds to it. It, it. When you start tuning into that, it's fascinating how freeing. Like I do not miss, I do not own a article of black clothing in over eight years, I don't miss it. I feel so much more like lush and alive using the colors, just like in nature. Got it. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I'm so looking forward to this. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Have fun with it. Yeah, I can't wait to hear what the what the experience is like. Thank you. Much. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, I'm super curious to know the style recipe you came up with. Let us know in the comments below. So often we are told how to be in the world, how to look, how we have to measure up. And I really admire that you approach style from the kindness, compassion, curiosity, and what feels good for the person who's in it. Yes, the professional view can be so helpful because sometimes we get so used to seeing ourselves a certain way, that perspective shift, when we see something else about ourselves that was always there. So thank you for bringing that to uh, Beth, to me and everybody watching, Catherine. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I feel really, that was very sweet. We're going to move on to the next session where Beth and I are going to be going through all the products and all the things. So stay tuned for that.
Yes. I'm excited. I'm excited too. <laughs> now I want to hear from you. Did you try out any of these tips? How did it go? Leave me a comment below. I would love to hear about it. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so that you're notified whenever there's a new video.